Well, friends, today we are wrapping up our sermon series, Breaking Bread with Jesus. And we know that Jesus broke bread with all kinds of people. He broke bread with religious leaders and Pharisees, with prostitutes and lepers. He broke bread with his closest friends, the disciples. And he broke bread with strangers. And so today, for our last table story, we're looking at a time actually after Jesus's crucifixion and death and resurrection as Jesus breaks bread with two disciples who made their way to Emmaus. And so I would invite you to join with me to follow along in our scripture passage. It's found in Luke chapter 24. That same day, two of Jesus' followers were walking to the village of Emmaus, seven miles from Jerusalem. As they walked along, they were talking about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things, Jesus himself suddenly came and began walking with them, but God kept them from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing so intently as you walk along? They stopped short, sadness written across their faces. Then one of them, Cleopas, replied, you must be the only person in Jerusalem who hasn't heard about all the things that have happened there the last few days. What things, Jesus asked. The things that happened to Jesus, the man from Nazareth, they said. He was a prophet who did powerful miracles, and he was a mighty teacher in the eyes of the God and all the people. But our leading priests and other religious leaders handed him over to be condemned to death, and they crucified him. We had hoped he was the Messiah who had come to rescue Israel. This all happened three days ago. Then some women from our group of, of his followers were at his tomb early this morning, and they came back with an amazing report. They said his body was missing, and they had seen angels who told them Jesus is alive. Some of our men ran out to see, and sure enough, his body was gone just as the women had said. Then Jesus said to them, you foolish people, you find it so hard to believe all that the prophets wrote in the scriptures. Wasn't it clearly predicted? that the Messiah would have to suffer all these things before entering his glory. Then Jesus took them through the writings of Moses and all the prophets, explaining from all the scriptures the things concerning himself. By this time, they were nearing Emmaus and the end of their journey. Jesus acted as if he were going on, but they begged him, stay with us since it's getting late. So he went home with them. As they sat down to eat, he took the bread and blessed it. Then he broke it and gave it to them. Suddenly their eyes were opened and they recognized him. And at that moment, he disappeared. They said to each other, didn't our hearts burn within us as he talked with us on the road and explained the scriptures to us? And within the hour, they were back on their way to Jerusalem. There they found the 11 disciples and the others who had gathered with them, who said, the Lord has really risen. He appeared to Peter. Then the two from Emmaus told their story of how Jesus had appeared to them as they were walking along the road and how they had recognized him as he was breaking the bread. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please send for units of AB positive blood. She's dying. 
So this certainly isn't an ad for Zipline, but are you familiar with this technology? It was new to me. Zipline, it is a San Francisco-based company. And what they do is they use drones to deliver life-saving blood to rural Rwanda. That they send out drones that it would take hours for others to drive, whether it's blood or medication or vaccines, to some of the most remote places in the world. And Zipline, they're able to send it in minutes to literally save people's lives. It's just one example of creative thinking, out of the box thinking that can change lives, that can save lives. Now, I was thinking about that this week as, as how Zipline just kind of drops in suddenly. Well, in our scripture passage for today, Jesus drops in suddenly. That all of a sudden, he's on this road to Emmaus with these two disciples. Now, we see in our story today how Jesus... He not only surprises the disciples who are on the road, but he just surprises many of his disciples on that Easter day. And like Zipline Jesus, he is totally focused on loving and serving people in need. That after he's raised from the dead, Jesus again and again, he pops up in surprising places. And I really like how Professor John Claypool describes the nature of God to his seminary students. He says that if God had another name, God's name would be surprise. Surprise. That on Easter morning in Jesus, he shows up at that empty tomb in the garden where he encounters Mary. Surprise! On Easter afternoon, these two men are making their way to Emmaus, and Jesus shows up to them in the breaking of the bread. Surprise! On Easter night, as the disciples, they gather in that upper room together, and Jesus, he shows them his hands and his feet. Surprise! God's other name is surprise, that Jesus shows up in surprising places. And while I wouldn't want to compare Jesus to a drone, there really is no place that is beyond Jesus' reach, that Jesus has this ability to reach people everywhere. And that's what we see in our story for today that these two disciples, they are on the road and they're talking about the recent events in Jerusalem and they are heartbroken and they are, con they are confused. And Jesus, he shows up to them. He drops in on them, but he comes in the form of a stranger. Luke tells it like this. He says, as they talked and discussed these things, Jesus suddenly came and began walking with them, but God kept them from recognizing him. Now, these two disciples, they don't realize that this stranger in their midst is Jesus. Now, wouldn't it be interesting to be in the room when people don't know that you're talking about them, right? Right? That's what's happening, is that they're telling Jesus about Jesus. They're telling Jesus about what Jesus has done. The stranger that, that Jesus came to them, and, and he was a mighty teacher, and he was a miracle worker. And he had come, and he gave up his life, and he was crucified. And that there are some women in their group who claim that, that they went to the tomb, and that, that he wasn't there anymore and that they encountered an angel who told them that, that he's alive. But the disciples, they're not sure what to make of this. They're not sure how to make sense of any of this. And so what does Jesus do? What does he deliver to them in the form of a stranger? He gives them clarity about the scriptures. In verse 27, we read, Then Jesus took them through the writings of Moses and all the prophets, explaining from all the scriptures the things concerning himself, that on that road, Jesus engages them in a, a bit of a mini Bible study, so to speak. But what he does is he walks them through God's plan, seeing how Jesus fits into God's plan since the very beginning, since the time of Moses. Moses. 
And Jesus does the same thing for us through Scripture, that he continues to show up and offer clarity through the Scriptures so that we can know how our lives fit into God's plan too. So Jesus shows up in the form of a stranger. What a surprise. But then Jesus, as their walk continues, he also drops in on the disciples in the form of a guest. Luke tells us that that Jesus kind of pretends that he's going to keep going on this journey, but the disciples, there's just something about this stranger, and so they beg him, Jesus, well, they didn't say Jesus because they didn't realize it was Jesus yet. They said, stay with us. Stay with us, it's getting late. And so Jesus, in the form of the guest, he accepts their invitation and he joins them at their home. And what does Jesus deliver to them in the form of a guest? He gives them an opportunity to serve. That so often, when we find ourselves feeling desperate, feeling distressed, one of the best ways for us to experience joy is to serve someone in need. Now, that might mean distributing food like we did this past Wednesday through our Feeding South Dakota food distribution. It might mean helping out at the banquet or Habitat for Humanity. It might mean participating in Service Sunday today to help Shoebox Christmas. Serving, it can take on the form of a lot of things. But it doesn't just make a difference for those whom we serve. It makes a difference in us. A few years ago, Prevention Magazine reported that people who volunteer are likelier to be happier than those who don't, regardless of how much money they make. Researchers believe volunteering, it boosts happiness because it increases our empathy, that serving a person, it's good for us in mind and body and spirit, and serving others, whether it's a guest or a stranger, it puts us in touch with the resurrected Jesus. In Matthew's gospel, Jesus says to us, come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the creation of the world, for I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger and you invited me into your home. I tell you the truth. When you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers and my sisters, you were doing it for me. Serving feeds our souls. Finally, Jesus drops in on the disciples in the form of a host. That when Jesus sits down at the table with them, he takes the bread and he breaks it and he blesses it and he gives it to them. And finally, they can see. They can see that it's been Jesus with them all along. They finally recognize him. And then he immediately vanishes from their sight. And they say to each other, didn't our hearts burn within us? Didn't our hearts burn within us? as he talked with us on the road. Jesus is our host. And what does Jesus deliver to us as a host? It's simple and yet it's deeply profound. Jesus gives himself. That as host, Jesus delivers that gift of himself. He revealed himself to the two disciples in the breaking of the bread and he reveals himself to us in the very same way. And one of the things that I love about Holy Communion is that whenever we celebrate communion, we remember that we're not the only ones, that this is something that Jesus instituted with his disciples centuries ago. And so this is the Lord's table. It's not ours. And when we gather to share in Holy Communion at the Lord's table, we remember that this isn't First United Methodist table. It's not a Methodist table, it's not a Presbyterian table, it's not a Lutheran table, it's not a Baptist table, it's not a non-denominational table, it's not a you-fill-in-the-blank table. This is the Lord's table. And Christ himself is the host. Christ gives himself. And that is the greatest gift of all. A gift beyond measure.
on that road to Emmaus, Jesus showed up. Surprise! And he came as a stranger, and he came as a guest, and he came as a host. But our challenge, our challenge is to be paying attention for those ways that God surprises us. Because God comes in many surprising places and many surprising ways. I experienced this several years ago when I was just getting started as a pastor. And I I shared a little bit about this story in my newsletter article in September. And when I was just getting started as a pastor, my very first appointment as a student pastor was at Brothersfield United Methodist Church, this one. It was an open-air country church just a couple of miles away from Parker, South Dakota. Friends, we averaged five people in worship. Five. And that included me and the pianist. (laughs) Sometimes we'd get really big and we had about seven or eight, but uh, it was wonderful. They were such gracious people and very patient for this very new pastor, I might say. It was a blessing. And I learned a lot. But one of the greatest gifts that I got to do was we had one person living in a care facility, and her name was Ethel. And so as a brand new, very energetic and enthusiastic pastor, I was so excited to go and meet her. And I decided that that we should share in Holy Communion together. And so I... I went out to Marion, and and we sat down together, and one of the things I'll always remember about Ethel is she had the most beautiful laugh. We had a wonderful visit, and finally it came to that time where we were going to share in Holy Communion together, and that's when her roommate Esther walked into the room. Now, Esther kind of hung back a little bit, stayed in the doorway. She wasn't sure whether or not it was okay to come in. Ethel and I invited her to come in, and and I knew that as a United Methodist that we have an open table, which means that all are welcome to come and, and receive the gift of grace through the bread and through the juice. I knew that in the church, but I wasn't quite sure what it meant when we weren't inside the church. I was pretty new. But there was something inside, which I think was the Holy Spirit. It was just nudging me to invite her to join us. And so we did. Now the three of us, we shared in Holy Communion together, Ethel, Esther, and I. It was beautiful. Afterwards, Esther shared with us that it had been years since she had taken part in Holy Communion. Years. And her eyes were filled with tears because it meant so much. That next month I came and I was so excited to share in Holy Communion again with Ethel and Esther and myself. But when I got there, I learned that Esther had passed away. And I was so grateful that we got to share in that gift of grace together, that my hesitation didn't get in the way of us receiving Christ that afternoon. Jesus shows up, sometimes in surprising ways, often when we're not expecting it. And sometimes Jesus shows up as a stranger, sometimes as a guest, and sometimes as the host. But Jesus always shows up. Sometimes Jesus shows up through life-giving blood in Rwanda. Sometimes Jesus shows up through Christmas boxes. Sometimes it's through helping a friend or a coworker or a teammate. But Jesus always shows up. Our challenge is to be ready, is to be open, is to be paying attention to those surprising ways and places that Jesus shows up in our lives so that we can share that gift of love with the world around us. Let us pray.
Holy God, we thank you for those ways in which you show up in our lives. And sometimes, God, we, we can easily miss it because you show up in a stranger or in a guest or even as the host. And so we pray, oh God, that you would open up our hearts and minds to receive you, to receive that gift that you offer to us in you. And God, through receiving your presence, your love, your grace, God, that we would be set free to live the life that you created us to live. We pray this in the name of Jesus, our Christ. Amen.